Okay, the thing to notice here is that even though you're tempted, I mean, there's such a great temptation to work all this out and have things cancel, you might notice that this is something squared, it's some like blob squared, and then some other blob squared. So this is actually the difference of two perfect squares. So if we're really careful, we should be able to factor this. Let's try. So I'm going to make these really big parentheses just to impress you. So I'm going to have, well, the first term plus the second term. And then I have the first term minus the second term. Do you see it's just the difference of two perfect squares, but the, the squares themselves are, the terms themselves are sort of complicated. But so what? Work it out. This times that equals that squared. Inside term is the exact same thing as the outside term, but they cancel because they're diff they differ by a negative sign. The last two terms give me this. But now we can actually simplify this a little bit. Let's see what happens. Here I have an x plus an x. That sounds like 2x to me. And here I see a y minus a y. That sounds like 0. So that's pretty cool. And what do we have here? Well, here I see an x minus an x. So that looks like 0. And then I see a y and a minus y. That also seems like 0. So this looks like I should put a 0 here, and 0 times anything is 0. This whole thing turns out to be 0, except for a big, big mistake. In fact, this is on my top 10 list. In fact, I think it's number 4 of my classic mistakes, number and that four. is the subtracting mistake, right? Share the negativity. Share the negativity. What you've got to do is distribute that negative sign everywhere. I didn't do that when I talked through the problem. So let me do it a little bit slower now. I have an x minus an x. That still is 0. But now I have a y minus a minus y. Minus a minus is a plus. So I actually see y plus y. And that gives me a 2y. Classic mistake there. Hope you make it now and never again. This would be 4xy. So this thing can be factored quite nicely into actually three little teeny things, 4xy. Neat. OK, how about one last one just for the road? Give me one for my baby and one more for the road. Did you watch the last episode of The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson? That's, well, the second to the last one. Bette Midler sang that song. It was very sad. I was in tears. OK, here's a quartic. Has a power four there. It's looking like a power problem. But I'll give you a chance to do it first. And uh, my only hint there is don't panic. Uh, see if you can sort of um, pull, pull it out. OK, well, um, the trick is to see that you have an x squared here and an x squared squared here. So if you'd like, one way to think about this is to maybe just um, replace the x squared by something else. Now, I don't know if you like this or not. In fact, I, I sort of wonder. Some people like it and some don't. In fact, let me do it for you both ways really fast. Oh, this is a good idea. That way, everybody's happy. Yeah, you want to make everyone happy. I want to make you happy, but I want to make everyone else happy, too. All right, so what would I do here? Uh, the first thing, i put parentheses around that, is to see, OK, I've got something squared minus 3, something minus 4. And so what do I do? I'll factor it. I'll put the copy of something here and a copy of something here. And you've got to be a little bit careful, because you'll notice that that product does give me that something squared. And then I see a negative sign. That means I'm going to have either a plus or a minus or a minus or a plus. But since these are the same, it doesn't make a difference how I place these. I'll put a plus and a minus here. It doesn't make a difference to the same. And now I need something to put in here that multiplies to give 4, but that combines in a very nice way to give 3. Now I'm going to talk you through how I'm thinking about this. These differ by 1. So I think a 4 and a 1 are going to work. Because if I take 4 and subtract 1, I'll sort of get a 3 there. Where should the 4 go? The 4 should be on the bigger. The 4 should dominate because I want this to be negative. So I'm going to put the 4 on the negative part. That's how I think about it. Let me recap. A 2 and a 2 actually wouldn't work out too well, because then I get cancellation and stuff. So a 4 and a 1 looks good, because they can combine to give 3. Since I want it to be negative, I'm going to put the big value on the negative side. So that's my thinking. Anyway, you might have a lot of different thinking and probably clearer thinking, but this actually does work. So there's the factorization, fine. And um, that's one way to, to proceed. Another way to proceed is the following. In fact, let me do this on a on some special paper here. Another way to proceed is to go back to this line 
and just take those terms, if they scare you, if they bother you, and just call them something else. Maybe just call it A. So maybe just let, you know, A, ooh, my yellow is dying. Let's let A uh, be x squared. If you let A be x squared, then you can just rewrite this out and say, OK, then we have A squared minus 3A minus 4. You see how I'm just getting rid of all that square things if it bothered you to work with it. And now you could just factor this as you would anything else. I put an A and an A, and then a minus plus, and then I put the 4 and the 1. But I'm not done yet. I'm not done until I replace the a's by the x squareds. So now I've got to insert for a x squared, and insert for a x squared, and then I get exactly this. Do you see how that's exactly this when I insert that in? So that's another way of doing it. If you sort of don't like dealing with that because you're afraid you might sort of drop an exponent, maybe just put an x here by mistake. A great mistake would just be to put x's there. If you think that might happen to you, be really careful and maybe make a little substitution and get rid of that problem. But then when you get your final answer, remember it's just the penultimate answer. The actual final answer requires you to plug back the, the x squareds in there, and then you get this. Okay? Now, uh, one last point is that maybe this is not the answer you got. Because in fact, this can be factored even more. Notice this is the difference of two perfect squares. So let's not stop there. Now sadly, of course, this is the sum of two perfect squares. No enchilada. But that second term is the difference of two perfect squares, x plus 2, x minus 2. And now I factor that completely. So in fact, there is the complete factorization of this quartic. It has these three factors, none of which can be factored anymore. Phew! Anyway, there's a hodgepodge of factoring, and I hope you had fun. I don't think it's that fun.